Despite what you may have heard, I did not sponsor a short circuit video or a Linus Tech Tips video. This microphone has my name on it, but I had nothing to do with it. This is the EPOS B20, a microphone with from a company with a new name, uh, very very similar to my own as EPOS Vox or EPOS Vox, uh, which was formed from the previous collaborative venture of Sennheiser and Demant, uh, which was known as the Sennheiser Gaming Audio Line. So they had the the G600 headsets and or audio interfaces and headsets and all of that stuff that was pretty good. But that joint venture ended, and Sennheiser sold off that part of the company to a company or branched it off at least to a company now called Epos Audio, which makes it very confusing for me with Epos Fox Fox also being audio related in my name. But this is their new uh, game streaming microphone called the B20. It is a condenser microphone, unfortunately, has the multiple polar pickup patterns like every other Blue Yeti clone, uh, and it feels cheaply made, even though I don't think it actually is. Uh, but I'm excited to take a look at it today. We've got merch for the first time in my career. We have merch available. We've got super sick large desk mats. We've got stickers to throw on your LTT store water bottle. We've got pins to put on your bag or your pegboard or what have you, all in the classic blank VHS style design. This is a high quality desk mat, got the sewn edges, thick enough to protect your desk and to get you nice smooth mouse gliding. And it's dark, so it won't show all your gross food stains. Evosvox.gg slash merch, first time in my career, and you get a free trial to Nebula, my streaming service, if you pick it up today. Merch, merch, merch. Buy it now. I'm Ebos Vox, the stream professor with no association with Epos Audio, for better or worse there, uh, sorry. Uh, but we are taking a look at a new microphone. It's been a little while since I've been able to do microphone reviews. I've been sick for like the entire month of June, so I'm happy to be back at it again. And this is a, another streaming microphone entry in the $200 price range uh, that I honestly don't feel like brings a single new thing to the table, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad choice necessarily, like more choices up to a certain degree are good, uh, but we're going to be comparing this microphone to the microphone it's basically based off of, the ephemeral Blue Yeti, as well as the HyperX Quadcast, or in this case the Quadcast S, which was updated to have RGB lighting. Uh, and then with some older samples, because I unfortunately don't have the microphone on hand, the Samson G-Track Pro. Because all these microphones are in the same price tier, although the G-Track Pro can be had for a lot cheaper. They provide very similar sound and only just have minor differences in features. But you're hearing it now, completely uncompressed, completely raw, uh, and we are on the cardioid pickup pattern mode. In terms of the physical overview, this microphone, like I said, feels incredibly cheaply made. And I hate saying that, because I, I can tell... Design-wise, quite a bit went into this microphone, and I am still peeking and clipping it, even though I'm not clipping an audition. So I'm gonna... Am I turning down or up gain? Hang on. All right, I believe I turned the gain down. Uh, physically, looking at the microphone, it has the black cylinder design, as so many microphones do. It seems like more of a polished take on the, you know, the Electro Voice RE20, Shure SM7B, the black cylinder concept. And overall, presentation-wise, it looks absolutely stellar. Like, it looks gorgeous. It's got that matte not super reflective, shiny, dark gray slash black look going on. It's got this nice little pole that comes down to attach to your mic arm. It, uh, it's got the nice little mesh on it. Looks wise, it looks great. The problem is physically, it feels like super cheap plastic. Everything about it feels super cheap and plasticky and just not great. That doesn't mean it won't necessarily last, but compared to the Yeti, which was metal, uh, the Quadcast was kind of plasticky rubbery, or the Samson G-Track Pro, which was built like a tank. This feels not super great. On the side that faces you primarily here, this is a side address microphone rather than an end address microphone, because uh, it does have multiple capsules inside. On the end facing you, you have a mute button. Clicked it back, now you can hear me. You also have a volume dial for the audio interface run into it, because this is a USB microphone. It connects through USB Type-C, but it is it only needs USB uh, 2.0. On the back, you have a gain dial as well as a pickup pattern switcher, because it has four different polar pickup patterns with two different capsules inside. So you have the cardioid pickup pattern, uh, which is the main sensitive to the front, less sensitive to the sides and back, pick a pattern that you want to use for desktop streaming to get the best performance out of it. Uh, but then it does have stereo, bi-directional, and omnidirectional modes. We'll talk about those in a moment. Also, I was kind of disappointed with the packaging uh, that the 
stand mount itself. So it comes with a basic little stand. The arm is pre-attached to the microphone. You don't remove it, but then the arm sits in the little base and you just kind of screw it in to hold it in place on your desk. It doesn't have any shock absorbency whatsoever, uh, other than like rubber pads on the bottom, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So if I start banging around on my desk, you may hear some handling noise to some capacity. Uh, without a shock mount built in and seemingly no way to actually use a shock mount with it, which is a more egregious offense IMO. It attaches with a quarter 20 thread, which is standard for camera, tripod, quick release plates and things like that, but not necessarily microphones. Microphones usually have a bigger thread size, and so you will need to attach to most microphone arms a quarter 20 to the wider, I forget the exact sizing, thread adapter, which thankfully I have sitting around just because I have a lot of grip gear, but it did not come with one in the box, which I found disappointing. It does come with a, I believe, 2.9 meter USB-C to A cable. Going over specs real quick, we're looking at a microphone that can record in 24-bit at 48 kilohertz. It is, again, a condenser microphone, which if you're not sure about the differences between condenser and dynamic, dynamics are typically better for desktop streaming setup because they reject more background noise because they're more so activated by your actual voice being projected onto the capsule rather than the phantom power coming into it activating the microphone. This one is a condenser microphone. It has a 50 to 20,000 hertz frequency response as well. USB Type-C works with PC, Mac, and PS4, presumably PS5 as well. I can't test that at the moment. Uh, however, playback gets you 24-bit 96 kilohertz audio and a 20 to 20,000 kilohertz frequency response. So should have a pretty good DAC in there as well. It comes with their own uh, EPOS gaming software that you, or EPOS, sorry, that you 100% do not need to use here. Uh, this is purely just extra post-processing. This is done on CPU. It's not done on the microphone itself or anything like that. There's no DSP. Uh, but it has a vocal enhancer, which is just uh, an equalizer suite. It looks like a nine-band equalizer. Uh, but it does look to be parametric, potentially, because it has curves going on. Uh, by default, it has off, warm, clear, and then you can set up your own custom EQ curves. I was just switching between them there, uh, which you could also just do in post. So this is a microphone sample of me talking with it off. This is a microphone sample with me talking it with the warm uh, EQ profile. This is me talking with the clear EQ profile. And then custom sets it back to flat so I can do crazy stuff with it. I'm just going to leave it on off. You also have gain control. You have side tone, which is how much you hear the microphone yourself in the headphones as you've connected to it. Also called loopback sometimes. Uh, this is extremely important for being able to monitor your... Uh, levels and things like that while streaming and recording you've got a noise gate if you'd like actually it turned itself on for some reason i'm going to turn that back off that's unfortunate i'll have to make a note that the first part of this video had the noise gate on i did not turn this on i think what happened was it has different profiles up here uh or presets but the default one isn't present so when i was flipping between them because it has music for whatever reason, eSport, treble, which doesn't seem to do anything, but it enables the noise gate. Movie, which enables the noise gate highly. And then flat, which is what I was on. I thought flat would set it back to default, but flat actually has a noise gate. But when I set that, there's no default, like, empty preset here. And so that got rid of my noise gate being turned off. So that's really unfortunate. And then there's also noise cancellation. Now up here, you also have a mute for some reason and a high pass filter which will uh, just roll off the base, which you can do with the equalizer on the 64 kilohertz or the 125 kilohertz. You can start dragging that down and do your own base roll off. So I guess now this is the raw audio with no noise gate since it had it there before. Now you do also have headphone EQ output settings, which is kind of neat. And that's about it in the software. So this has all been with the cardioid pickup pattern. Uh, we're going to record our usual samples and compare the pickup patterns. And then I'll throw in some comparisons to the previous microphones. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. We are now in the bi-directional pickup pattern, which means, so the difference between stereo and bi-directional, bi-directional aims to only pick up from each of the two sides of the plane of the microphone here, ignoring any audio that's kind of, so like this side ignores audio from that side and that side ignores audio from this side. This is great for podcasts where you have two people on opposite sides of the microphone because you're not getting any kind of uh, phase or like weird 
cancellation of hearing yourself in both capsules. Uh, but the stereo mode actually picks up the crossover noise, which is better for just a stereo recording if you're going out and about or trying to get a stereo wider sound stage, or if you're trying to do a ASMR or something. But this is what the bi-directional mode sounds like. Again, I'm only one person on one side of it, so this is kind of pointless, but people ask for it. Three rings for the Elven Kings, Under the Sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone. Nine for the Mortal Men, Doomed to Die. One for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne in the Land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. This is omnidirectional mode, so it picks up, uses both capsules to just pick up everything around the microphone. Three rings for the Elven Kings, Under the Sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone. Nine for the Mortal Men, doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. And now we're in the stereo mode, which allows you to get around the microphone. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Alright, next, let's compare it to some other microphones. And keep in mind, unfortunately, the G-Track Pro samples are older, so... Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the Mortal Men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne in the Land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the Mortal Men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne in the Land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the Mortal Men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne in the Land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the Mortal Men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne in the Land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them, in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Now here's how the B20 sounds rejecting keyboard sound and the like. Tip tap, tip tap, tip tap, tip tap, tapping on uh, box royal switches, we've got my AC on, tip tap, tip tip tap tap tap, mouse clicking, tip tip tap tip tip tap tap. This is of course in the cardioid mode, the other modes are going to reject way less in general. And then we've got our white noise test. Directly facing the microphone, around the side, around the back, around the side, over top, below. And to illustrate this, let's go to, so this is bi-directional. This is omnidirectional. And this is stereo. So comparisons to the other microphones, two significant notes that I wanted to point out. The G-Track Pro has a little bit more warmth compared to the uh, B20 here that I kind of prefer. Now it is a little muddy, so you have to cut some mids and do some EQ work to get it to sound its best. Uh, but out of the box, it sounds a little bit warmer and a little bit nicer for the deeper, warmer registers that my voice can produce at times. Uh, and I certainly prefer it for that. I do appreciate that compared to something like the uh, HyperX Quadcast. The Quadcast has, even though it doesn't advertise it anywhere, I discovered that at least in the cardioid mode, it has some degree of a limiter built in so that you don't peak and distort the microphone too much whenever you clip or get too loud or whatever. Uh, was a secret, like, not marketed feature that I discovered about it during my original review a couple years ago. Uh, this microphone doesn't seem to have quite as high quality or high, you know, exactly the same functionality kind of limiter, but I will notice that when I get super loud and start clipping, or if I just start turning the gain up, if we start turning the gain up here, at least in my initial testing, I don't actually start distorting too much as just, yeah, clearly I was wrong about that. It doesn't have a limiter like the Quadcast does. The HyperX Quadcast S, by comparison, if I start cranking up the gain, we of course are going to start distorting and clipping, but my overall audio levels aren't really increasing. 
It's actually pretty fascinating how dynamically it works. You are still going to clip at some point, but IMO, the roll-off for it, has always been a lot smoother. Consider that a gain slash limiter test. Also, as with most of these little condenser microphones, there is quite the plosives issue, so p p p p p plosive plosive Is this microphone worth $200? That's a call for you. Uh, it's obviously more expensive being a brand new product release, whereas you can get used and or discounted HyperX Quadcast, Blue Yetis, G-Track Pros for significantly cheaper than $200 at this point. So in terms of raw money being spent right now, eh, for $200, I would have liked something more. I do appreciate the overall product stack that Epos has. In fact, I have been kind of slow to get my review out of their headsets because they sent me the, I forget which exact one this is. This is like the G301 headset and the G601 interface. I don't know the exact model numbers, but I've been very impressed with those, especially coming from the Sennheiser HD6, or no, the the Sennheiser Gaming Mass Drop headset I had for a long time. I gave it to a family member. Uh, they do make high quality stuff. And so there's nothing inherently wrong with this microphone, but with so many $200 multi-cardioid pickup pattern condenser microphones on the market right now, I feel like in order to be like a, a strong hit or a, a super serious recommendation, they needed to do something more and offer more to the market. And I don't feel they're doing anything special here. And that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, here's the microphone. Here's my review. Hope you enjoyed. Product links, as always, will be in the description below. Uh, go check out our merch. We do have merch. Stickers, pins. You can slap a sticker on your microphone, give it some more character. We've got pins. They look absolutely great. And we have desk mats. Eposfox.gg slash merch. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe, join us on Discord, and we'll meet again.